Okay, so today we're going to take a look at this new example and we're going to try and have widget or communicating with widgets that are not the callback widget. So in other words, let's run this program first and let me show you what I want to do and then we'll go into the code and take a look at it. So notice here I have a grid of buttons and notice that when I click on a button, my widget here accepts the label of the button that I've, you know, the same, basically the labels are, you know, matching for this one and this one. Now, essentially, I'm, I have to change a widget now that is not the one that receives the event. This is the one that receives the event, and yet this one is being affected. How do we, how do we do that? So, a lot of the code here is exactly the same. What's different? Well, yes, we are creating a callback. Yes, I am passing something to the callback. But what's important here is lines uh, 20. Is how do we access an, another widget? In this case, it's an FL output. So the way I'm going to do this is I have to create an FL output pointer and I'm going to call that n and then I'm going to now what do I have access to in this function the only thing I have access to remember v is actually consumed by the integer that I'm sending there so I can't really use that I could but then I can only send one thing but I'm actually using it for a different purpose so the only thing I really have is wid now how do we get from wid to the, so let me come down here. Notice here we have begin and here we have end. Any widgets that I create in between here are children of the window. Okay? So therefore, I'm creating 15 FL buttons, right? 15 FL buttons, 5 by 5, and then, sorry, not 5 by 5, uh, 4 by 4, right, which is 0, so the, the indices go from 0 to 15, 4 by 4 is 16 widgets, right, but the, but the biggest index is 15. Now, this becomes my 16th widget right or index it is my it is my 17th widget but the index is 16 therefore here notice what i'm doing i'm i'm saying first get me the parent of widget which gives me the the fl window and then on the fl window i'm saying give me child 16 now this is horrible and I say here in the comments, this is awful code. That means I have to keep track of how many widgets are created and I have to count to see which one this is. This is ridiculous. This is not going to work long term. There must be a better way of doing this. Obviously, you can see it is working. Like when I run it, you can see that indeed that label is being copied into the widget. But as I said, this is not a good solution moving forward. So what do we do? Here is the solution to our problem. And this is the way I recommend that you code with FLTK. The solution is to program using object-oriented programming. And I'll tell you why. First of all, let's take a look at the code. Let, let, first, let me run it. Let's just show you what, it, what the run of this looks like. OK, great. Seems to be working. Slightly different. I'm appending the number here, right? Uh, or prepending. But essentially, I'm able to accomplish the same code. But now let's take a look at the code itself. I'm creating a new class called grid that inherits from FL window. 
Next, here's my constructor, okay? And then I'm creating, instead of vectors now, I'm going to create an array of FL button pointers, and I'm setting the size to be 4x4. Four four. Then I'm creating my FL input pointer, INP. That's the one at the bottom. Here comes the tricky part. Now, we got to take a pause here, and I want you guys to digest this. Callbacks cannot be a part of a class. We have to make them static. That's a limitation of FLTK. Okay, so enough to say that the callback function must be declared static. It cannot be part. It cannot be an, an instance level function. Okay? However, what we're going to do, therefore, is we're going to get around this problem or this limitation of FLTK by writing two functions for every callback. That's right. You heard me say it. I'll say it again. We're going to write two functions for every single callback. Why? Well, the first one has to be the static one. And remember what static means is that it's not an instance-based one. It's that that function is shared with all instances <coughs> of the class. Now, it's going to accept, just like any old callback, it's going to accept an FL widget pointer and a void pointer. But, what are we going to do inside this function? Let's go take a look at it. Now, it's called, the name of this function is called buttcb. So let's go down to buttcb, and there it is. This is the static function. Static functions don't have the this pointer. The this pointer is implicit in all class methods. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to use user data to pass the this pointer to the function. I know this might initially this might seem like kind of confusing, but it's going to make a lot of sense in a moment. But this is what you need to remember. This grid, okay, this grid is inherited from FL window. So we're going to we're going to pass the entire instance to this callback. That's right. Everything that that is this window, in other words, the window and everything within it is going to be passed through the user data void pointer v. Okay? How does this happen? Well, let's go take a look where we where we create the callback. It's right here on line 29. Notice that well, I've got the comment here. We send this. This is like self in Python. We're sending the this pointer to the callback as the second argument. Therefore, the this pointer is the void pointer. Now, okay, now you understand that the this pointer gets passed to V. Okay? Once again, if you're not familiar with this, excuse the pun, the pointer this refers to the instance of the class. Okay? Just like self. I said that already. Now, we're going to cast it because it is a void pointer here on line 40. We're going to cast it to a grid pointer and we're going to create a grid pointer here called win. See that? Then just skip line 41 for a second. Now we're going to call win CBI, or I should say we're going to call the method but CBI. So therefore, win becomes the instance of the class, right? Because we're assigning it to the this pointer here. And now, be, now that it's an instance level, we can call but CBI. Now what's but CBI? Here it is. So essentially, we're getting around the limitation of callback functions being static by passing the this pointer to the callback function 
by doing it through two function calls instead of one. So now, if I go down to but CBI right here, that's what I'm that's what I'm calling. Oh, and by the way, what am I passing it? I'm passing it B. What's B? Well, it was the widget that received the event. What widget received the event? What was this callback created for? For this for these buttons. Right? So, therefore, I cast O to an FL button and then now B is an FL button which was sent to the function, to the static function, and now this gets passed on to the instance level function here. Okay, so B gets copied to WID here. Now CBI is, but CBI is basically just like a regular callback function from Python now. And so I go ahead and do some magic here, which is essentially I'm trying to figure out which button it was to get the row and the column number of the button. So I can do a little bit of arithmetic. But still, this is kind of dicey. I don't really like the way I'm doing this because I'm having to fandangle or figure out which row and column the button was in. Now sometimes this can be really helpful in specific certain types of code that you're doing, trying to figure out, you know, uh, what row and column is it. And this is the way you would do this. You would go into a nested loop and say if but rc equals wid. And now you know which, which one it is. And then I just use a little bit of math to put the number on there and everything works out fine. Mind you, this is not the way, again, this is not the way I'm going to suggest that we do this. So what's a better way of doing this? Well, listen, if we can inherit from FL window, why don't we just inherit from button as well? So take a look at this next example. So in this example, uh, notice here, I'm inheriting from FL button and creating a my button class. And what's different about this? Really, this is so such a small, and I'm barely modifying FL button. All I'm doing is adding an integer attribute to it. That's it. Line 14. Notice here on line 12, I've even put the the um, the constructor in the function in the uh, class declaration because real I'm not really doing anything I'm just I'm just calling FL button here I'm gonna say okay well I'm gonna have to call FL button because this is derived from FL button and then I'm just adding one extra piece of information onto the class which is an integer now now when I go and make my grid, which inherits from FL window, I'm going to make my buttons not FL buttons, but my buttons. Okay? And I have to be careful here because now I have to change all FL buttons to my buttons inside my code. And the code's really pretty much the same except for this line. Now, I have a counter here, I, and I'm simply going to set the num, right, attribute of the class that I created to I, plus plus. So it increases every time. Um, just, to, just in case you're wondering what's the difference between I plus plus and plus plus I, I plus plus will assign first, then increment. Okay, plus plus I will assign, sorry, will increment first and then assign. So I want to start with zero, so I'm going to do I++. Um, yeah, so like, look, the callback's pretty simple here, right? This is all the same. This is all the same here. I'm just using my button instead of FL button. And then here, 
look what I do. I just simply change. The only thing I have to do is worry about changing with num from an integer to a C string. And that's it. And now when I run this, hooray, it works.